Oh, I haven't seen him in so long. Choo -choo, she's she's saying hi. Oh, oh, he's pulling my thing off. Chewy, oh, I miss you so much. How is he? <laughs> At times, we all feel lost in search of something more. This is Christina Dam, and this is Liberate the Podcast, a podcast designed to help inspire and guide you forward through everything spirituality, creativity, art, and just giving you a sense of empowerment so that you can be powerful, be magical, and be free. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Liberate the Podcast. Today, we're bringing back wonderful Hel Helen Vanderhyde. And, you know, we've done many different podcasts, many different Liberate universities, and Helen's one of my dearest friends, uh, but also uh, such an amazing teacher and uh, educator, as well as practitioner in the space of holistic healing and spirituality. And I know Helen, we've left this podcast a little open to see, you know, where we go with things, right? You know, but it's also, it's important to let everybody know that you're teaching new courses, you have new downloads of information, there's a personal uh, pathway blueprint that is available for free on your website to help people access and tap into uh, to the Akashic records and other vibrations and realms. But you know, there's a whole slew of different teachings and things that you're doing as you continue to get more downloads as you continue to evolve. So, um, you know, I would like to start by touching on that and seeing where where things have shifted for you and where people can still find you and how they can continue to grow with you as you're growing and evolving. Yeah, it's kind of miraculous because Christina, like one of the very first podcasts you and I did was really early on in my teaching career, my Akashic Record teaching career. It was when I became a certified teacher to teach people the beginning and the advanced Akashic Record courses. And that was through Dr. Linda Howe's lineage um, and her, her pathway prayer to access the heart of the Akashic Records. And then over time, I furthered my Akashic education and training with Linda. And I obtained the highest level of teacher certification that was available through her Akashic um, Institute for Akashic Studies. And I was able to teach certification classes one through four. So Christina, you know, you have been with me through all of this growth and evolution. And specifically, um, from when I became a teacher to this point now where I have actually branched off from Linda Howe's work. And uh, in my Akashic records developed all new curriculum, like yeah. all new. So it's really fun to reconnect with you and our liberate family and audience um, community, because I think this growth and evolution that I've experienced is also so similar to others, you know, uh, path of growth and evolution. It's like you find, you find the tool or the path that, really resonates and aligns with you at that time. And then as you continue to evolve, you are just opening yourself up to these newer systems, newer practices, new, newer ideals. And that's kind of where I'm at now. So yeah, um, the, the teacher never <laughs> stops learning and, you know, right. and, and, and growing. And I think that that's, that's true of any field, right? You know, in any type of practice, and even even things that are are not like career or curriculum based, like even in, in your health, you know, you, it's common knowledge that people get to a fitness plateau. And then what do they have to do? They have to change it up. If they're a runner, maybe they start swimming or they start biking or they do something differently to engage different muscles, you know, and it doesn't mean that they lose that endurance that they built. They just need to challenge themselves differently and grow even more. And, you know, people outgrow certain jobs, they outgrow certain relationships. And, you know, yeah, it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with the past it just says, okay, that was where am I going next? Right? Yeah. And I love that 
part of your journey was diving in and, and asking those questions of how can I serve people in even different, greater ways. And you were given curriculum, you were given downloads of information that now you're ready to share. So whether people have taken regular uh, Akashic records or advanced um, Akashic training with you or any of those other two that you were able to teach, you can also now teach them other things, right? Mm -hmm. And all of these other curriculums that you've developed, or if somebody's just resonating and meeting you for the first time today, right? You know, you touched on something that I, I wanted to come back to. And it's, um, you know, like the teacher always being a student. And recently when I was in, so the the, the curriculum that I developed, it's there's five classes as like the foundation work. And in the fifth class, um, what was brought to my attention around who my mentors are or, you know, who a mentor is to me, the response that I got back was your students. And that felt so mm. real because I listened to them, what their concerns are, what their needs are, their struggles you know, their triumphs, you know, and they've helped me to develop this work. And not only just as like the, the spark that opened that up so that I could develop it, but I got to share it with them. And as I received their feedback, I was able to refine the material and make adjustments and, you know, try a different spin on something over here. Like I really listened to them. Like, you know, for example, one of them was like, Helen, like we need something to keep our notes organized. And so we developed a workbook that like goes along with each class. Like it's, so everything is so thoughtful. And I, and I just like, I love listening. I love listening to humanity. I love listening to my clients, to my students, to my friends, to my colleagues. Um, I love listening to the guidance that I receive in the records. So um, I think that also is an amazing part of how we get to grow and evolve is being yeah. receptive and open. Absolutely. I mean, that's, you do, you, I mean, you learn more and I mean, especially this type of work, right. And when it is service work. So how do you know how to serve people if you don't get feedback loop? Right. So I love absolutely that. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So speaking of feedback, what brought, brought me to this place. Um, so I was previously teaching Linda's pathway prayer to access the records and it's kind of, you know, it's, um, it's like this one way and over the years of teaching, it wouldn't work for some students or they would be struggling. And then we would work in their records together, or I would work in my records. And the guidance that kept coming back was, not a vibrational match and like Helen will get you another one. So I started to get people like their own invocation. Mm -hmm. And over time I was like, huh, this is really interesting, you know, because Linda's prayer worked and, you know, works really well for me. Like I, I never had any issues with it, but, um, but it wasn't working for everyone. So um, over those years, I was like, huh, this is really interesting. Maybe I should turn this into a service, like helping people get their own, invocation and the guidance that I got was like, hold off, not yet. And I was like, okay. So time went on and, you know, there, there was a really big turning point, I think with, you know, the pandemic in 2020, like it really had me reflecting on so much and those limitations that I had experienced, um, in that work, um, they felt false. Like it was like, oh, these limitations are not real. Like um, we don't need to like limit or hold ourselves back or, um, or say what the Akashic records are. They're not, it's different for each person. And so um, at the end of last year, I separated from her work mm -hmm. and uh, I worked in my records. And one of the things that was birthed out of all my experience and kind of coming up against those limitations was this personal pathway blueprint. And the blueprint is essentially, a it's a seven step suggested guide so that somebody can personalize their own invocation to access the Akashic records or beyond. It's really open. It's not limited to the records. It's 
whatever is true for each person. So some students nice. want to just work with guides or angels, or there's some students that work with like the galactic federation of the cosmos. Yeah. You know, it's really so personal. And that's what I love about the blueprint is it's like, yeah, whatever that is for you, you can absolutely tap into it and you can use this blueprint as your suggested guide to do that. Wow. I love that. I do. And, and it's, it's, it's really, it's really more expansive because, you know, there, there's a lot of people as much as there's greatness and people can go into the Akashic records and there's a lot there for them. Um, it is masters, teachers, and loved ones. And it's very specific. That's who you're communicating with. These are the gatekeepers. These are, you know, and, and so this allows for people that maybe have a little bit deeper belief systems to, you know, I think that when you work with somebody's belief system and use that as a extra like push or force, it's going to be that much stronger for them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I love that you said that because we previously were trained that the gatekeepers were the masters, teachers and loved ones. And what I started to experience, like first and foremost, was the group of loved ones was very limited. Um, we were trained that it was just it was just loved ones that we've known that have now passed on, but I was accessing loved ones that I never had a relationship with in this incarnation. And, and so then I, I, um, I opened up that group name to, to be ancestors. Um, but then again, over time, I was like, wait a minute, I feel like I'm still limiting what is available and what wants to, you know, connect and, and, you know, just be a part of my life experience so now in the invocation that I use, I specifically work with, um, so what I say is faithful guardians, devoted guiding forces, and all supportive beings. So I loved being able to say, um, you know what, there are all of these forces and beings and and I, I want you all to come in, like you're all invited, um, but I need it to be productive. You know, I- yeah. Um, of course, like I, I want them to be trustworthy and faithful, you know, because sometimes when you are opening up to the non-physical, um, you can also attract in the trickster energies or whatever. And so you, you just want to be really mindful about the words that you use when you're invoking the energy. Wow. Amazing. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. I, I love it. Can't wait to explore it more. And you're doing all of your classes remote on Zoom right now? Doing them all remote on Zoom. And I am I just launched the work publicly and I'm still like redefining and um, just allowing the material to, you know, evolve and um, find new ways that I can strengthen it. So I just launched it all, um, class one. Uh, and, um, and I'm going to do a class every month. So class two will be in November, no classes in December, class three will be in January, class four in February, class five in March. And it's really just kind of this trial that I'm giving myself to share it publicly with people who may not have Akashic record experience or knowledge or, um, people who may, you know, be seasoned and, and have a lot of experience. So it's still sort of in this, um, like refinement phase. Um, mm -hmm. And then once I'm done teaching it um, in March, there's a whole group of teacher trainees in the program. So in April next year, they will do class six, which is all about their voice, their work. So they'll be developing some material of their own and uh, the teacher training ends in June next year. So I'll have about um, 25 trainees that I that have been through all of this work that will be like certified and Amazing. available. Yeah. To teach all five classes. But then I want to give myself some time next summer to really reflect and see, okay, what ways can I refine this a little bit more and make it um, just like even more powerful. Okay. And then maybe think is each of those classes, a standalone class, or do they have to do in a series? So you have to do one in order to do two and you have to do two in order to do three, or can somebody jump in and say, Oh, well, I just found out about this and I want to do class three, you know? Yeah. I, 
have been working in my records around that because the way that, um, so basically I open up my records and I just like ch channel the curriculum. So they talk and I just like type away and it's kind of mind blowing to me because the lesson plans are like close to 20 pages each. And I'm just like, wow, that is like so wild that I can hear and like, you know, like just transcribe everything that's coming through. But when we first developed the material, we developed it as um, building off the previous class. So in class one, it's an Akashic attunement, which is really bringing in all of the energy and consciousness that in class two starts to really take shape as we work with the, the pathway blueprint and then someone creates their invocation. Okay. And then in class three, it's like, okay, great. Now you have your invocation. Here's how to just like expand it tremendously. And so we introduce um, probably one of the, the less, uh, most misunderstood, less uh, talked about um, clear, uh, clear sense, sense, which is clear tangency. So clear tangency previously um, we've known as like uh, psychometry where it's like you can hold an object and then mm -hmm. you can like read the energy off it. But it's kind of backwards because the energy comes first and then, you know, it's turned into something physical. So what I'm teaching my students is to really access that um, expansive energy that's available in the higher realms. And then we can start to mold it and shape it into the things that we want to see in our reality. So that's classes one through three and okay. then classes four and five. So those are all personal pathway practitioner classes, one through three. Classes four through five um, are is Lifeway and Advanced Lifeway Practitioner. And Lifeway means way through life, way of life. Gotcha. And so what we're doing is we're taking these relationships that we have to this non-physical realm and we're allowing that to become our way through life. So we're, we're very conscious, um, you know, of the things that we're creating and what we're building uh, in our, in our physical reality. So right now, everything does build from the previous, but I've been working in my records because I'm kind of saying to them, well, what if somebody has their invocation and they don't want to go through classes one through three, but they want to dive right into class, uh, I'm so sorry, one through two, but want to dive into three. Or what if I have a student who's really advanced, who maybe did a one-on-one -on -one personal pathway session with me to have their pathway, you know, like they are very advanced and they want to go right into four and five. So um, I'll have more information regarding that. I think I think what I want to just make sure is um, is that individual like I want to set them up for success. Yeah, and I so they need sure. to, they need to have the basis in order to get the most out of the class. And so yes. there's a little bit of room there for people to um, possibly you know maybe reach out to you and enroll, but it would have to be within the realms of being capable to not be left behind or or have missed out on something very valuable that they need to know and understand in order to get the most out of the current class yes okay okay <laughs> awesome and then you know so after you know depending on when anybody's watching this or listening to this um you know, I'm sure that then there'll be, you know, a whole different group of, and uh, you have all of these individuals tr uh, teaching and um, being able to lead these groups and in more times, but also offering more of these uh, sessions and these curriculums yourself. You know. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Beautiful. 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 Anything else more that you want to share on, on this, you know, way of accessing the metaphysical or the the fifth dimension or however you want to call that? Well, something really interesting that was um, just like coming to me is uh, like when I look out into the world and I see what we're all going through, you know, with, with the pandemic, um, with just a lot of, um, systemic injustice and imbalances, you know, like imbalances in human beings, imbalances that are just upon this planet. Um, the work 
that I developed is to, to, to essentially to bridge and to serve those inequities or those imbalances. So the work is um, allowing each individual to come back to their inner authority and to, to really open up to the wholeness that is available to them at a soul level, at a human level, so that we can really bring that energy and that presence into this world. And I think that, you know, this world really will thrive with individuals who are embodying that wholeness and embodying that ability to um, create balance or to create equality. And it, it's going to look different for each person, yeah. but that's absolutely my intention with this work. It's that, you know, I'm not the teacher at the top. Like I will share all this material with you and you can be alongside me as we share this work with the world. But what we're doing is we're empowering everyone to, to be equal, you know, to be side by side, shoulder to shoulder, and to just do our best to really make this world a better place. I think that's always been like one of my, one of my intentions. Um, oh, that's so beautifully said. <laughs> well, I remember when I was a kid, I, I was like probably in, I don't know, fourth or fifth grade. And I, like, I just like had this desire inside of my heart to, um, to do something that would contribute to world peace, but I never knew what that would look like. And, um, and over time it started to look like a lot of different things. Like I remember I was like really involved and I was an activist, you know, and with human rights and children's rights and, um, but I would burn myself out. And so I really had to find the right way that I could contribute towards that so that I was also taking care of me. And then it just so happened that working with the Akashic Records was like one of those ways that I could do that. So well, yeah, and on I, such a deep level, right? You're helping people connect with alignment and balance inside, giving people a connection to more hope, yeah. healing, and their own inner truth, right? And mm -hmm. I think that if people have that, and I think that that's where everything's so out of alignment in the world, right, is that we're so detached from ourselves, We're not living in those moments of, uh, what we really want and who we really are. And we're so distracted, overwhelmed. There's so much pressure and there's so much of this need to conform to whatever the norm is in society that isn't necessarily in alignment with a human's energy, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if anybody's have spent a couple minutes like I mean, that might seem really high in the sky, what it just said, and maybe it went over some people's heads, maybe it stuck with you, maybe it not. But like, if, you, if you've spent a day in nature or go on a hike and you suddenly feel different, and maybe even at first, when you first walk on the trail, you're itchy, you're this, you're that, you're che fidgety, you're checking your phone, you're doing other things because of that our, our mindset is so boom, 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 like a little, ping pong machine, you know, and, but after you get and you just breathe, you can sit there and you could just stare at a tree or look mm -hmm. at a bug or a bird fly. And in that moment, you just feel present and that you feel like you could sit there all day. If you wanted, there's like this inner calmness that meets the outer calm and there's an alignment. And that's what I'm talking about you know, and I'm not talking about everybody just going to nature, but that is where we feel this, like you can exhale and be like, <sighs> and just be. Yeah. And we don't live our life like that. We haven't designed a society like that. And it seems like since, you know, the forties or the fifties after the industrial revolution, and then like things happen, it just became more and more and more. You went from a you know, 
40 hours a week was a long time. The commute was five, 10 minute drive at the most. For most people, only one parent worked, the other parent didn't. There was all this quality time. Everybody ate dinner together. There was, you know, like all of this to now, I mean, the average person, you know, might work two jobs, right? Mm -hmm you know, or work 80 hours a week or 60 hours a week. And then they commute, not with the pandemic because pandemics changed a little bit from working from home. But like, if we go pre pandemic time, half an hour, an hour back and forth, some people an hour and a half back and forth, stuck in traffic, mm, all of these invisible waves that are bombarding us at any given moment from cell phone rays how many millions of different cell phone information is going through our bodies right now right i mean like the that those waves are just hitting us electricity waves like all of these other things radio waves all of the tv signals the internet everything is traveling these messages that our mysterious phone can just pick up in thin air anywhere we go well, if they can pick up these messages anywhere we go, guess what? They're going through us too. That's why the device can just go do and grab it, right? And search for anything on the internet and talk to anybody in any country at any given mo moment or text somebody and two seconds later, if I text you right now, you're, you're all the way across the United States from me, but in two seconds, you'll get it because that message went all the way to outer space and back down again in a millisecond, right? <laughs> you know, it, but like, how you know we don't relate anymore mm -hmm. we're so like mm, you know we stay up late we go to bed you know it, everything is off and then we wonder and this has been piling up more and more right i mean in our generation for both me and helen we went through school without a cell phone right we went through that experience where you use a rotary phone, you do different things. And I mean, maybe there's a lot of people that are younger that are, are watching this, but like, I would just want to say how massively things changed. You went from everything needing to be a corded connection, right? Mm -hmm. You know, even your cable came through a cord, a wire to everything being remote. And for you to have a computer in your pocket that surpasses computers that even existed 10 years ago that were these big monstrous machines. And so mm -hmm. you wonder why the world's going crazy? You wonder yeah. why everybody's in this massive psychosis? I do honestly think that the world is in a massive psychosis. They're brainwashed the things that I hear people say both sides of the spectrum doesn't matter what you believe that seems like there's regurgitating you know like mm. I, I'm like do, are, are you even hearing yourself are you you know like I mean I'm not trying to like push anybody's buttons here or anything like that but like I'm like some of the things I was like did you just like were you hypnotized and you just now are hearing this but it was interesting I watched this um this uh video the other day by um, somebody that I, I uh, follow on YouTube that's a doctor and he, he was going through in society like these mass hysteria um, events and mass psychosis events that have occurred throughout history and mm -hmm you know, it's, it's these pressures and these fears with this overwhelm and it creates this recipe where people literally have lost their mind, you know? Mm -hmm. And, but I mean, I don't know if it's the pandemic that's caused people to lose their mind or also the state of they're so out of alignment with their self. Right. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think mm -hmm. that was a long winded thing to maybe segue us into our next uh, conversation. Um, but shit needs to change life needs to change we got a wake-up call from that when we got stillness for three months in the beginning of the pandemic where if you i it's too bad so many people were paralyzed by fear that they didn't get to enjoy that stillness because mm -hmm. i think if it happened now in in a new mindset people would be would embrace that a little bit more dive into it a little bit more wouldn't be so uh, clouded with the fight or flight mechanism that occurred in the very beginning. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I love everything that you just shared because, uh, something that was, um, coming to me as I was listening was how 
there are individuals who really chose to go inward and reconnect with themselves. And then on the other side of the spectrum are individuals who chose to rely on these like external forces, you know, to, to tell them, you know, whatever they need to know about themselves. And then of course, you know, there's like everyone else in between, but I think um, there's still this, this really incredible opportunity that the pandemic offers us. And, and it is about going back to the source of you, like going within and being able to listen to you. I know that for myself, um, you know, everyone has opinions on what they think is right for me and my body, but they're not living in this body. They don't know, you know, what is happening inside this body. Only I know, and only I can be the, the authority to make choices on behalf of this body and of myself. You enjoying this so far? Did you forget to subscribe? Make sure to do so. It takes two seconds. Just press that little button, the red one. You know the one. Just press it, little like. All right, enjoy the rest of this content. And I think that the pandemic really gave us that opportunity mm-hmm. to like reconnect in that way. And, you know, and, and not saying that anyone who is listening to external forces is doing it wrong. You know, I think that It's really important, of course, to listen outside, you know, and to take in these different perspectives. But at the end of the day, realize the choices that you are making there because you know what is in your best interest and nobody else. Yeah. And and bringing you back into that centered point of view, right? I just don't want more if we look at 10 years, right? We look at the last 20 years and we see how much more busy everybody's life has gotten, how much more distracted, how much more disconnected, even though there's the false illusion of connectedness with social media and everything like that and internet. It's very, very disconnected. You don't have people just getting together like and all hanging out as a group of six people talking anymore. And when, and when you do, you know, and it's not about age and stuff like that. It's it, no matter what age range you're in, but even when you go out to things like dinners or go over to people's houses nowadays, I would say that the average person doesn't, you know, like in that environment, if you have six people in a room or six people at a dinner table out to a restaurant, I'd say you don't go 10 minutes without somebody picking up their phone. And that's probably giving too much credit. Now, now, I'm not saying everybody's picking up their phone every 10 minutes, but in like a group of six, somebody's breaking that 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 containment circle of of connection by disconnecting their self to connect to a different world. Right. Mm-hmm. And you have that over and over and over again. Right. Mm-hmm. I'm guilty of it. I do it. You know, we've created that. It's It's now like acceptable. Like if you're Oh, you know, people are ordering things uh, from their from their server or whatnot, and they're on the phone. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, I'll get yeah that. Uh huh. <laughs> I mean, we've seen it, we've witnessed it. Yeah. And then now you paralyze people with fear that's been going on, mm-hmm. right? Now, and then if people are so worried about the external that they're not choosing to listen to their self even more, right? Mm -hmm. Now that's not any any way of an opinion of one way or another. That's Mm -hmm. just saying how much more disconnected from you are you getting? Mm -hmm. How much more of your personal power are you giving away in every moment? Mm -hmm. Because fear is false evidence appearing real. And I like to say that fear only exists from a lack of trust. Mm. So where are you not trusting if you're feeling fear? Where are you not trusting you to be able to figure things out or, or to navigate, right? 
-hmm. At the end of the day, where are you not trusting God, the universe, or whatever else your belief system? I think we can say that in this podcast here because most people are spiritual mm -hmm. that are listening. If it's your time to go, it's your time to go, right? Mm -hmm. Are you being fearful of death? Are you being fearful of, mm -hmm. are you not trusting that everything's going to be okay if, so, if something changed or your life ended? Are you not trusting that you're going to be okay to figure out how to maneuver those situations and their circumstances, however they unfold for you? Are you not mm -hmm. trusting your body? Are you not trusting your mind? Are you not trusting your heart? Are you not trusting your health? Oh, Christina, I love this so much. Um, I had like a couple, as you were sharing that, there was like a couple thoughts that came to me. And one of those was, I mean, this is really interesting because the pandemic, like the, the inception of this pandemic truly has been an opportunity for us. And I think what it started to show me was that my voice was just as valuable as anyone else's mm -hmm. and that I needed to like find it, reconnect with it and express it, you know, once, once I had what was available there to be expressed. And that really helped me come back to my personal power. It was like, oh my God, I am just as worthy as anyone else in what I create and what I share with the world. But how much more better when it comes from me? Mm -hmm. So uh, you were talking a lot about personal power. And I think that personal power is so valuable and it's almost as if the life force inside of us is asking us to come back to that. And, and it's also saying, and here's your opportunity to do that. But yeah, you know, it, it, I don't want to discredit anyone who, who may not necessarily be looking for that or want to connect with that. I remember when I was teaching Linda's work, I was like, I am so happy teaching someone else's work for the rest of my life. Easy peasy. I don't got to do any work, you know, but when life asks you to grow, <laughs> you know, and you got to show up, you just do it. You show up because you know that what's on the other side of that is so much more rewarding than just settling, you know, for, for something that's just not fully in alignment. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and knowing that we're all on a journey, right? And one thing leads us to the next and leads us to the next. And are you going to embrace it? You know, like there's one thing, I mean, as much as I went on my little rant a minute ago, you know, we're all in our own places, right? And there's a reason for everything. And so if you're coming out of one of those experiences where you were a little paralyzed by fear, we've all been there. I've been there. Other people have been there. I'll be there again. I'm sure. You know, I'm human. You know, we have these emotions and these are spectrums of emotions to put checks and balances on our life. And if you start to view that every feeling, every emotion that you have, it's not by accident that you're given that feeling. You know, it's an indicator for something, right? Yeah. or it's an awareness or it's like a checkpoint for knowing where you've went so that you can know where you move beyond right mm -hmm. and so no judgment if you're there if you've spent the last 19 20 months or whatever 21 months going on whatever we're oh, can you believe it uh <laughs> it it you know paralyzed or in fear or or it, you know in your in your wanting to now like say well how can I turn this around? How can I shift? Like maybe the world isn't going back to the way that it was, you know? Mm -hmm. And do I reinvent my career? Do I reinvent myself? Do I take ownership of myself? Do I, mm -hmm. what do I have within my daily routine or daily resources to take one step toward power towards even bettering my life, right? Mm -hmm. To knowing that I'm that much more prepared for whatever, mm -hmm. 
right? Mm -hmm. There's a fear that you have. What's the best way to conquer the fear? Feel, Mm -hmm. counteract it, right? If you're so fearful that, I don't know, the world's going to end in an apocalypse, well, I'm freaking like, store some like dry food and canned goods and like figure out how you're going to take care and put some extra water. I don't know. Right. You know, like if that's going to do it, or like if you're worried that you're going to get sick and die, right. I'm sorry. I'm like being blunt. Right. Then what can you do to help your body prepare better so that it's there to fight? Is it taking vitamins and minerals? Is it drinking far more water? Is it getting better sleep? Is it eating better? Is it starting to go for a run or a jog every day or lift weights or exercise and move your physical body? Are there Mm -hmm. things within your control that you can start to do? Mm -hmm. You know, is it practicing uh, um, a discipline of mindfulness to ease your stress? Is it taking care of yourself in other ways? Is it nurturing you physically by taking baths or going to get massages and decompressing that way? Is it walks Mm -hmm. through nature? Like I'm just throwing out ideas, but the important part is for every negative, there's a step that you can take to prepare yourself or build yourself better, right? And if you focus on just the tragedy of the outcome, You don't see the benefit of how strong you are, how resourceful you are, how resilient you are. Like humans aren't the fastest. Humans aren't the strongest. I would argue that humans aren't the smartest. (laughs) (laughs) But the one thing that they have going for them as a species, and I'm part of that, I'm separating it in my statement, but I'm inclusive of it, is resilience and resourcefulness Mm. right the ability to adapt and adaption over time has allowed humans to live in cold live in warmth make fur coats or fires or or canned foods or do different things so every climate every area all parts of the world right Mm. and if that's been true of humanity's whole entire existence how is that not true of you and so where do you invoke resourcefulness and resilience that ability to adapt this might be new to us going through this experience of a pandemic but war famine pandemics upheavals have happened throughout every culture in history. Maybe it hasn't happened in a hundred years, so it seems a little foreign, but like, you don't have to go far down the human tree or your ancestral tree to have somebody in your family went through some devastating period in time that they and their culture and their society had to figure out that uprooted their whole life and existence. What we are going through is not abnormal. It is normal of the human condition. Mm -hmm. I just love that resilience and resourcefulness. Um, Because when I think about inner authority and when we come back in, like when we go back in, just how resourceful and resilient we are, no matter what the climate of the world is in, you know, no no matter what um, uh, tragedies are taking place. It's, it's, um, it's such an inner game. Yeah. You said it perfectly. It's so simple. (laughs) It's an inner game. (laughs) <laughs> the outside, it's going to happen. Those are experiences. We came here. We're here to grow and learn. If that's your belief system and uh, as a soul. Well, why do these things keep on repeating and they just might look a little bit differently? You know? <laughs> right. Right? 
You know, I mean, yeah. even if you look past like just America's history or the different things that, you know, but if you go even further back and you include Europe and other things, I mean, the wars, the craziness, like, I mean, you know, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire or, you know, or if you look at Genghis Khan and like that, hit, the mass genocide that he, he did in the air and went or Hitler. Or if you look at World War One or World War Two, or you know the the plague of the nineteen twenties, like it's like there's something going on all the time. <laughs> but is that you know if we go back to like you know even thinking of the symbolism of like the tarot deck, right, and like the hero's journey, and the reason why this deck of cards is still so relatable to everybody that sits in front of a reader that pulls those cards centuries later not decades centuries later same deck used like that's not a coincidence we go through this you know what do they say there's only seven movies ever made in hollywood it's the same plot line over and over and over again (laughs) It's, it's, but there's, there's only a few tales to tell Hmm. and, you know, but why are those tales told? Because they relate, you know? So like if the, you saying that it's an inward, you know, it's, it's your choice internally, what you do with it, the outside's Hmm. just there. And when you stop making it so about the outside and realize that it's always been about the inside, you'll find Hmm. your power. Mm. I was just thinking about the, I think that Netflix does it. It's like, choose your own adventure. Mm. You have the opportunity to choose like what the character chooses next and, you know, and it will unfold the way that it does. But um, I was just thinking about that in terms of humanity and that we truly are in a choose our own adventure. Yes. And what we see in our external reality is a reflection of those choices, those thoughts, those responses to, to the external reality. And so when we're able to really come back into the center of ourself and to make the choices that feel most in alignment with the outcome that we want to see. I mean, it's like we're, we're living the life that we, that we are so worthy of living. Yeah. Cause we may not ever be able to pick what happens on the outside as far as external events. Right. We had to decide whether we, we stop or start a volcano from erupting. Right. You know, or the rain or a thunderstorm. But we do have the power to choose how we interpret it, what we do with it, what we make that mean about ourselves or our life, Mm -hmm. how we're going to move beyond it. Because tragedies happen and some people leap from tragedies and use them as stepping stones to create something magnificent. Mm -hmm. And some people have a tragedy happen and it buries them alive and they suffocate Mm -hmm. in it and they keep on reliving that tragedy every single day for the rest of their life. It happened once, but they allow it to live in their mind for years. Mm -hmm. Right. I don't know about you, but if I experienced something once, like probably enough for me, (laughs) (laughs) I've had those moments where I buried myself a little bit too. (laughs) <laughs> then I realized that it's just a story that's not happening now. Yeah. I'm just choosing to relive a memory or something that was wronged on me. But that already happened then. I already went through it. Do I need to do it again? <laughs> uh, you know, Christina, another thing that I, when you were talking, like I was just making some little notes, like I wrote down the word pattern. Because those patterns that exist um, collectively worldwide are also what patterns we experience on that individual level that is like contributing to these 
collective patterns. <laughs> and I just think about like some of my own patterns, you know, and like when I catch wind of it, I'm like, whoa, different people, different circumstances, the same theme, I'm like repeating this theme over and over and over, you know, and, it, and I think again, like, okay, I have this opportunity to look inward. Like, what is that? Like, what is this pattern that I created for myself? Yeah. I don't want to experience it again. Oh, exactly. And you don't, and, but we do. We, I mean, we live in, we, we, we live in the forgetting, right? Life is all about the forgetting. And then we have to remember to remember. <laughs> and, but then we forget. And then we say, oh, I'll never do that again. And then we forget. Yeah. And then a few weeks, a few months, sometimes a few years, suddenly the same thing. And you say, how is this happening again? I said that I would never do this again. I said I would never date this type of person again. And then I realized I'm dating the same person just with a different head. Oh, man. Oh. Comical. But to tie it all back in with that choose your own adventure, mm -hmm. the personal pathway blueprint is allowing people to choose their own access. Yeah. And, you know, allowing that empowerment and that, and that alignment to be with them. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's so great that that's something that he created at this time because people need to be reminded more than ever that this is a choose your own adventure. Hmm. I love that. So Helen, where can people find you? Where can people <laughs> You're so cute, Christina. Uh, so people can find me on Instagram at Helen Vonderheide. Can also find me through my website, just be true to you. Dot com and it's B E E uh, true the number two Y O U so just be true to you dot com and I'm not too active on social media these days for the purpose of really coming back to the center of myself and um, and just really wanting to sort of just like be with myself and like create. Um, yeah. but my, but my website is a really great place. Like if people want to learn a little bit more, and of course, if people would, would like to check out this blueprint, um, that's under the about tab and it says personal pathway blueprint, and you can download it as a PDF. Amazing. I think everybody should go download it, explore. And, you know, if you love Helen's wisdom, you know, connect with her directly, watch some of the other podcasts or liberate universities that we have that she's done. Um, and yeah, thank you. It's always a pleasure, Helen. Oh, Christina, I love you so much. I love you too. And all of you that are tuning in, please like, subscribe, thumbs up, comment, you know the drill. You've heard this on every video that you've ever watched, but it matters. The reason why we repeat it over and over again is people don't find this stuff, not unless people like you take 10 seconds, one second of your time to press a button. So go ahead and do it. And thank you. And until next time, have a beautiful day. Thanks for joining us. If you enjoyed this conversation, please like it, subscribe and share it with your friends. If you want to hear more about what we have going on and happening online or in, in the neighborhood, check out liberateyourself.com and sign up for our mailing list. Uh, also follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Liberate Yourself. It's you are self, you are S-E-L-F. Until next time, be powerful, be magical and be free. Hi everybody, I'm Christina, founder of Liberate. This is our mascots, Miss Piggy and Mr. Chew. Liberate is like the Willy Wonka chocolate factory for spirituality. You might wonder what the heck that is. And so basically it Liberate is a place of sheer magic, activating and reigniting that magic into you so that you can live your fullest potential and most fulfilled life. When you walk through the door, you're gonna see magic everywhere you look. 
You look down and you see a crystal floor made with over 10,000 pounds of crystals. You say that's a lot, but I know I laid them and had to do numerous trips to the crystal store to buy more and more crystals. There's all of these beautiful, magical gemstones that are activating and creating healing from the beneath and the surface. You see the tree of life when you first walk in. You go upstairs and every room has its custom sacred geometry mural in it. And then you notice that each of the rooms are labeled with different uh, names of deities or archangels from different traditions and, and religions from all over the world. This is liberate. Liberate is a space of union. Liberate is a space of creativity. Liberate is a space of expansion. And we're here to help heal you, transform, and help you rediscover yourself.